dear lovely student, I am Mr. Ahmed Karim, math teacher at the private Jali and the basic school. Uh, inshallah, I'm going to explain uh, mathematics for grade 9 in English uh, language. The first subject that you have in chapter 1, section 1 is square root. Before we talk about square roots, there is an important definition you have to know, and that is perfect square. So what is perfect square? Perfect square is a number that can be expressed as a, an integer by itself. For example, 5, okay, times 5, okay, multiplied by itself is equal 25. Then we can say that uh, 25 is perfect square. Or we have another defi definition. It says as the what? as the second exponent of an integer. 5 times 5, you can write it as 5 squared is equal 25. So 25 is perfect square. Or let's say 4 times 4 is equal 16. Then 16 is perfect square. Or 100, let's say 10 times 10 is equal 100. Then 100 is a perfect square. This is about perfect square. Then we have a list of some of the perfect squares. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on. This is the list of some of the perfect squares. We have to know them because we will need them. Then you should know that 1, it comes from 1 times 1, 4 is comes from 2 times 2, 3, uh, 9 is 3 times 3, and so on for the rest of the numbers. Then, when you want to find the square root of perfect square, it's quite easy. For example, if you want to find the square root of 4, it's going to be, it's going to be 2. It's going to be 2. Or you want to find the square root of 49, it's going to be 7. The square root of 121 is equal 11. The square of 169 is equal 13. So finding the square of perfect square, it is easy. But sometimes you have non-perfect squares. For example, the square of 13 or the square of 8, the square of, let's say, 10, the square of 105. Okay, these numbers are not perfect square, then how can you find the square of, let's say, 13 and the rest of the non-perfect squares? Okay. To find the score of non-perfect squares, we need perfect squares. That's why I told you they are important. We have to know them. We need them. Okay. Let's uh, solve some examples. The first one, it says find the square of 20. The square of 20. As you know, 20 is not perfect square because we cannot write or express 20 as the product of a number by itself. So how can you find the square of 20? Let's write the perfect squares list. 1 times 1 is 1, then 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Okay? Then we have to find two perfect squares that 20 locates between them. If I choose, for example, if I choose 1 and 4, can you say 20 is located between 1 and 4? Or can you say 20 is located between 4 and 9? Of course not. We cannot say that. So 20 is located between 16 and 25. 20 locates between 16 and 25. So 20 locates between 16 and 25. You know that the square of 16 is 4. The square of five, 25 is 5. That's why the square of 20 locates between 4 and 5. Okay. Let's uh, complete the list. 36, then you have 49, then you have 64, 81, 100, 
125, and so on. Example B it says find the square root of 110. The square root of 110. Okay. Then we are going to find two perfect squares that 110 is located between them. Then uh, let's check the numbers. 110 is not here. It's not here. So it is there. Between 100 and 121. Locates between 100 and 121. The square of 100 is 10. And the square of 121 is 11. So the square of 110 is locates between 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Sometimes in the example or the question we have negative with the square root. The negative is outside, it's not inside. If you have, let's say, the square root of negative 50, it is undefined. We cannot solve it. But, but the negative is outside. So how to solve it? Please do not care about the negative. Just focus on the number. Focus on the number 15. So we have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Then 15 is located between, between 9 and 16. 9 and 60. The square of 15, write down the negative, and locates between 25 and also 16. Then we are going to write the negative. Okay? The square of 16 is 4, and the square of 25 is 5, negative square of 15. So the negative square of 15 locates between negative 4 and negative 5. Then we have some uh, Nishimani questions. It says, which is square root lies between 11 and 12? Uh, maybe you focus on the answers first, but do not focus on the answers. Directly, we are going to square both numbers. 11 times 11 is equal to 121. 12 times 12 is equal to 144. Then which number locates between 121 and 144? So if you say 100, let's say 2, 102 is, let's say, locates as, as far less. And 150 is greater, also 170 is greater. The only number is, the answer is 131. So 131 is located between 11 and 12. Again, question 2. Uh, 44 is located between two integers. So we have 5 times 5 is 25, three, uh, 6 times 6 36. So 44 does not locate between 25 and 36. Then we have 6 times 6 36, uh, 7 times 7 is 49. So 44 is located between 36 and 49. That's why it is. 6 and 7 is the correct answer. For C and D, 7 times 7, 49. 8 times 8, 64. 44 is not here. For D as well, 64 and 81. 44 is not located between them. That's why the correct answer is B. Question 3, which value is located between negative 7 and negative 8? Again, we are going to square both numbers. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. So, which number is located between 49 and 64? 65 is greater than 64 is, let's say, above them. Then 57, the correct answer is 57. 57 locates between negative 49 and negative 64. That's why it's between negative 7 and negative 8. C is negative, uh, let's say, 47 is less than 49. That's why we did not choose it. And also, this one's not the correct answer. Question four, which two integers lie, uh, does, which two integers does 72 lie between? So here, 49 
64, 64, and 81. So 72 is located between 64 and 81. D is the correct answer. The last question, which square root lies between 14 and 15? 14 times 14, 196. 15 times 15, 225. So which number lies between 196 and 225? So it is 200. 200 locates between 196 and 225. Okay, dear lovely students, this is the end of our class. I hope you get benefit from me. Thanks for watching.